Good evening, everybody. So um, this is for me to open the full council meeting on the 15th of May 2019. So the emergency evacuation procedures in the event of a fire alarm, fire drill or other emergency sig signalled by the continuous sounding of a bell or buzzer sound, please exit from the room via the exit doors indicated and assemble at the meeting point in the car park area, car parking area. So welcome introductions. We'll um, just want to announce first that the Mayor's Charities this year um, have made a total of £8,217.42 pence during 2018-19 and I've decided to split this 50-50 with the Stroke Association and the MS Therapy Centre or the Brightwell Centre of £4,108.71 pence each. And there was a bit of a delay at the start of the meeting because we were waiting for the MS Therapy Centre to see if they turned up but unfortunately they're not here this evening. Um, just also want to announce that payment is subject to formal agreement under the agenda item 22.2 approved by bills and direct debits uh, for payment in the council meeting later on this evening. Um, so do we move on to the presentations and checks? Yeah. So that's the uh, Stroke Association here. <laughs> Give them both of us. <laughs> um, first check.
So actually, just for some background, I think it's worth noting just on a personal note. The reason I picked the Stroke Association is, unfortunately, uh, my grandmother, about uh, eight plus years ago, suffered quite severely from a stroke, and um, it was one of um, the charities that helped her. And unfortunately, I lost her during um, this year as being mayor in October of last year. So uh, thank you for what you do, and obviously, it's a very personal uh, type of thing for me. That's why I picked the Stroke Association. So I just want to formally say why. Thank you. So item one is received apologies from absence, and I believe we're all here. Full attendance, full house. So item two is to let the chairman of the or chairperson for the council of the ensuing year and to receive the chairman's declaration of acceptance of office. So, are there any proposals for the Chair of Council? Brian. <coughs> Is there a seconder? Seconded by Roger. So, all those... Are there further nominations? Are there seconders for that? Andy. So, um, as with last year, if um, Tony and Tom could leave the room for the vote, and we will take a vote on the chairperson for next year. signal your intention for Tom to be chair by raising your hand, please. Yes, nine. All those against? No, it's oh, it's just one or the other. Yeah. So all those in favour of uh, Tony? Nine, two, three. Is that one extension? Tom, Tony, do you want to come back in now? Congratulations, Tom. You are now the chair of Bradley Stoke Town Council for 2019-20. Pictures and handover now. Okay.
of the uncertainty the last year, so I haven't prepared even my speech. <laughs> I thought not to prepare, that's the best thing. Uh, but thank you very much, thank you colleagues. Thanks for the confidence and trust you have upon me to elect the new chair, the new beginning with the new council. So we have uh, diverse views, yes, but we all work for the town and the community. That's an important part. What do uh, whatever you know, differences that we have, I don't, I don't, I totally know that uh, because I'm looking at the bigger picture, and I hope we can actually go do many good things. And uh, thanks to Tony for actually also uh, because we this is a democracy is, is a, there's a diverse views that we need to appreciate. Um, and uh, one of the as and I haven't prepared who will be the male charity for the year. Because I thought we can we have time, we can think of it, and um, and thanks to all the volunteers, people who are actually working for the community in different realms, rally stripping, glue, reaching, a lot of things. So that actually makes this town a community to move ahead. And um, thanks for all the people who actually worked already for the town council and for this town, especially I know the people from, I mean earlier from 1987 onwards this is actually what right now that's what we are seeing because people, efforts of lots of people efforts of contributions of many people that's fruit that we are actually uh, right now having and thank you i think i would like to uh, again thank everyone and i will solicit your support and your cooperation we need that and thank you very much Number three, resolution relating to declaration. Resolution relating to declaration of acceptance of office of office the council is not present at the meeting. I think everyone. everyone yeah. And right now, that is an important part to elect a vice chair, man for the council for the ensuing year. Yes, any proposals? Yeah, I would like to propose Ed Rose. Any, just a second. John. No. No, we didn't do that. Sort of <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't like you, Ed. Uh, okay, is anybody to second? I'd like to, well, we do the second first. Yeah, anybody to second? Uh, Ed Rose. <clears throat> okay, Roger. Any other nominations? I'd like to nominate uh, Councillor Franklin, who is the one for I'll second that. Okay. Chair, I'll, I'll nominate Tony Griffin. I'll
Anybody to second? Andy seconding that. <coughs> That's an interesting yeah, three. Okay. Okay. Ken three. Um, so it's uh, Tony, Ebros, and Franklin. Okay, so can we... So I think somebody Five, has abstained. Anybody abstained? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think she'll feel well informed in that. That's fine, then just that you can abstain. That's fine, so that's two abstentions. Can we call back? Can we call back? Uh, Kate, can we call back? by councillors. That's number five. Um, we've had signed forms from all councillors to take part, uh, to grant the dispensation to take part in discussion voting relating to the 2019-20 budget and then the 2020-21 budget and precept setting process. The dispensation will run from 15th of May 2019 to 20th of May 2020. Okay, so we need to propose. <coughs> Franklin proposed it. Ben seconded it. All in favour? <laughs> Unanimous. Microphone, please. Oh. Yeah, sorry, I thought that's fine. 
Kommt her. Was? Number six, declarations of interest by members under local government act 1972. Um, this is just to say that all councillors need to complete and return their declaration of interest form electronically, please, as South Gloss Monitoring Officer wants it back via an electronic Word document this time. I've had a few back, so I need them back by the end of next week. If anybody hasn't got access to a computer, they're quite welcome to come into the office and fill it in on one of our workstations. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Number seven, approval of standing committees. To approve standing committees of council and appoint members of the council to serve on the standing committees. 7.1.1, I know. Yeah, I'd like to say something. Uh, <coughs> yes, Roger. Because there's no proportionality within this council, as there should be, um, it doesn't matter in the past when everyone's being conservative. And now we have a democratically elected opposition of independence and non Labour. We need to ensure that there's a balance to maintain, to make sure that Ruling group have the most members on a committee. And I've taken the trouble to find out who's going to stand on the committee for ourselves, okay? Would you like to do that? Oh, Roger, it's supposed to be democratic and we're. Yeah, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Can I just say that there is nothing written in Bradley Stoke Town Council standing orders which say anything about the makeup of committees. So, no, can I, what I was going to say is if you wanted to change it, you'd obviously then need to look at changing standing orders. But as far as I'm aware, before my time, it was never always just one like Conservatives. I think it's been Lib Dem and all sorts in the past. Yeah. Yeah, not since 2007. I don't know. Yeah, well, 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 yes, yes. yes. Yeah. But we can do that practically. It's in the standing, according to standing orders. Right. But we can. Yes, Mike. Thank you very much, Joan. Um, I think I was going to raise something very similar under item 17. <laughs> um, I've served on a number of councils, county, unitary authority, district. And there are two things there. One, we've always had propor proportional representation. And secondly, the size of the committee is fixed, so that you don't have uh, perhaps overloading of one committee and weakening of others. Um, I just put that forward for consideration by the council. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Uh, well, well, yes, right. Yeah, um, it's interesting, um, because the word proportional representation on has been for a long time. And it was quite obscure because um, if you had a councillor, which um, you know, a couple of people which were party and wanted to actually go on, uh, it was made very, very difficult. Um, but in reality, due to uh, some uh, sensible thinking on the Labour Party, we eventually decided to scrap it. Mm. So it's a non good situation. Yeah. But this is not in the fixing a committee, is actually what Mike said. We can yeah. think sometimes overloading, otherwise, mental position. Really. But we can do that practically, but so unless it's in a standing order. Yes. Yeah, yes. 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 Yes.
Yeah, no, that's, that's okay, thank you. Thank you. So we need to start with the self finance. Yes, finance. Yes. Yes. Ben Randall. Franklin Elizabeth. Brian Hopkinson. And Teddy Keller. Okay. Anybody else? Anti vote. Three. Ex-officio members, anyway. Tony is an ex-officio member of all the yeah, committees. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Three members. In the finance, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, who seconded? Franklin. So there is actually a committee, right? Now, do you want to read out the names? So that's Councillor John Ash, Councillors John Ash, Ben Randalls, Franklin Garusalandri, Brian Hopkinson, Terry Cullen. <coughs> so that is actually proposed by Elaine and seconded by Franklin. All in favour? Okay, Thank you very much. Then we will go to 7.1.2, Planning and Environment. We have Ben Randalls, Michael Hill, Terry Cullen, Brian Hopkinson, Ed Rose, and Peter Crony. Okay. You told Paul to do that, did you? Uh, anybody, anybody, anybody wants to actually join in? Two, three, three. Okay, so. Can I just recap? Councillors Ben Randalls, Michael Hill, Terry Cullen, Brian Hopkinson, Ed Rose, Keith Crunny, Elaine Hardwick, Andy Ward, and Fabrizio Pazino. Okay. Any proposal? Yeah, Ed Rose. Anybody to second it? Andy Ward. All in favour? Unanimous. 7.1.3, Russia Youth and Amnities Committee. Yes, any proposals? We have myself, Roger Odin, Ben Randalls, Nikki Hubbard, Terry Cullen, Brian Hopkinson, and Franklin Urizuanti. This is the Russia Youth and Amnities Committee. Anybody else here? Andy Wood. Elaine Hardwick and Fabrizio. Yes, so if I just recap, that's Councillors Roger Avenin, Ben Randalls, Nikki Haller, Ray Cullen, Brian Hopkinson, Frank Lewis-Lansley, <coughs> Elaine Hardwick, Andy Ward, and Fabrizio Pazino. Okay, anybody to propose? Yeah, Roger. Roger, second. <coughs> All in favour? That's also unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay, this is an important part. Number eight. To resolve that Bradley Stroke Town Council continues to meet criteria to exercise the general power of competence. We have the uh, information in your resolution in your agenda pack. This is a resolution. Bradley Stoke Town Council solves that as of 8th May 2019. Sorry, the date of should be 15th. Oh, so 15th, that's today. It meets the following conditions 
should be able to award itself the general power of competence. Two thirds or more of councillors have been elected rather than co opted and, or appointed. And the clerk to the town council holds the certificate of higher education, first level of foundation degree in community engagement and governance, awarded by the University of Gloucestershire. And the council to the town council, the clerk to the town council has completed the relevant training, that is, training in exercise of general power of competence in accordance with the national training strategy for parish councils adopted by national association of local councils. So this is a resolution. <coughs> We've been awarding ourselves with this for quite a few years now. So anybody to propose? Ben Rantles. Anybody to second it? Ed Rose. Thank you. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Right now, it's to appoint representatives for the following, and this is for the outside bodies, to represent the town council. Um, 9.1, Almondsbury Charity. Marion Ward appointed by Bradley Stroke Town Council for Council on the 13th. March 2019, a four year term. So, even though um, a councillor, a uh, pre previous councillor, is not elected, she has to continue for the four years. So, that's actually a good thing. Just noted. Noted. 9.2 Even Local Councils Association. We need two representatives to go from the, this town council to the Even Local Councils Association. So I would like to have uh, two nominations. Last year, just for your information, it was the town clerk and councillor Tony Dickens. Okay, um, Tony, you been have you been able to go to that meetings? The even look. I've got a few of them, not all of them. Um, I'm able to stand again if uh, the council so wish. But there is, there can be two, uh, two councillors if you want. It so. can be two councillors. Yes. So if there are any volunteers, please, anybody to actually to come forward? Just to let you know, it's a sort of a forum where other councillors from other districts... Um, uh, yeah, I served in the Avon Local Council yeah. Association, so it's actually... Some of the new people may not know, but it's, mm. what it is, it's for... Um, you get together with other uh, councillors from other districts and other town councils. Parish councils, yes. And um, it's, it's a nice little forum. But there's usually the meeting sometimes will be in the daytime, but that's the only thing. Any interest? Um, I'm happy to propose to say quite if no one else would like to. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was also thinking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But in a... <laughs> Okay, yes. It's difficult if it's the daytime. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So the town clerk Okay, that's been. But ben. ben seconded by. Yeah. Okay. Right. And all in favour? Yes. That's good. Thank you. Next one is the South Gloss Area Alka Group. It is a Alka itself, but this is actually for the, this district. So there will be a representation in branch. So last year it was Andy Wood. Franklin and the town clerk. The three people. Okay. So, any Franklin? Have you been to that meeting? How, how was that? Was the interest? We went to Westerly, didn't we? Yeah. 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 So uh, my time, maybe we were in even Charfield, even called <laughs> Zip Chipping Sodbury. Mm, yeah. Move around the area. Yeah. So when I was in Alka, I went to even the after you know Western Supermare, you know many places we had. Yes, anybody interested, be as a volunteer, to do that for the South Gloss area Alka group? This is a smaller one. Fabrizia, do you want to try? Try? Any interest? Continue. Are those daytime meetings? Yeah, daytime evenings. Yeah, it does vary. It's weird. Does Andy still want to continue? Anybody interested? Any people? Just have to yeah. Franklin, Franklin, Sean, interest. Yes, that's it. Oh, oh, oh. 
I'll pop along to that. Yeah, OK, so that's good. So are you happy with it, Steve? And plus Tom Clark, Franklin, and uh, right now it's Tony. OK, good. Propose, propose, Ben Rand has proposed it. Anyways, seconded by Lane Hardwick. Yeah, it's all in favor. That's also in that. Must, yeah, that's right. Right now, it's the Patrick Filton and the Stokes Community is against Hate Crime Group. Yeah, uh, the last year it's uh, Tom Clark and Tony Griffiths. But I was also an ex officio member of that, being in the police IAG, so I used to attend that. But anybody was to interest? They are, they tell me to, doesn't want to know, we'll just say yeah. Nick, yeah, Nikki, hello, yeah. So, Nikki and, uh, uh, Tony, do you want to interest? Two, 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 so right now. There's two nominated, then I'll stay out. Okay. Uh, I will otherwise it's okay. Thank you. And Franklin, do you want to know? No. Okay. This is an important thing because um, police, people from representation from different agencies are there, so you can. Have. Anyway, right now, do you have any proposals to for. So that's Nikki Haller and Lane Hardwick. and seconded by um, Terry. All in favour? <coughs> Number 9.5 Emergency Air Operations Base Forum. Last time it was um, Paul Hardwick, someone to replace. Anybody? Any other interest? Anybody? It too? This emergency, one. yeah, one emergency air operations base forum. Mike shown an interest right now. Okay, so as it's a two interest right now, okay, we will have a vote. Okay. So we need a proposal second, second for Elaine and a proposal second for Michael. Please. Mike. Yeah, Keith for Mike. Any potatoes? Yeah, Roger second. Yeah. For and so yeah. So Michael Hill was proposed by, by Keith, Keith, seconded by Roger. Thank you very much. Anybody to second Andy Wood. Who proposed Elaine? I proposed. Thank you. And that's second. Fabrizio. Thank you very much. Okay. Do you want to actually want to come on? Is that um, good? Um you should really just leave the meeting. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, I'll just step out because I'll know what's going to happen anyway. Mm -hmm. Especially if you block. Probably not. But it, it is a democratic process. Proposal, and you have been proposed and seconded. But right now, right now, this is. But right now, as it's an election being proposed, right now it's carrying. You have to carry on. So, Mike, please. No, Tom, I'm sorry. No. It's alright, I'll step down. So, you're withdrawing. I'm withdrawing it. Okay. Because I know what will happen. Okay. So, right now. So, it's been who proposed to Mike? Keith proposed to Mike. And Roger seconded. Okay, all in favour? Next one is right now Friends of Jubilee Green. It's being closed, so there should not be any representation. Okay, nine point seven. Press spokesperson is in. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, the Ben was uh, our press spokesperson. Um, yeah. Anybody to second that? 
Yeah, one of the things which I felt was, you know, the we have a journalist right now in our group, and I thought directly nominate uh, because it's a starting point. Um, uh, so, and from in um, Nikki Hallo, also. It, it can only be one person. Can't it? Yes, it can. It can. And they work in conjunction with, with the town clerk. It's a democratic process. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, I think Nikki would have been really well qualified as a, as a contender. If they done it for a long time, uh, but Nikki didn't want to do it because uh, she's done a lot of press stuff and she's got really good command of English literature and things. Yes. She would have been actually great. But uh, she's not going to do it. I'm certainly not going to do it. Uh, Perhaps next year. Yeah. 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 All in favour? Responsible finance officer, there's no content. <laughs> <laughs> So it's been, uh, it's an hour for, is a Rachel Fuller. So all in favor? Sorry, I'll propose. Propose. A red rose, second. Yeah, I think. Uh, the ben. Who seconded? Red rose. Thank you. <laughs> yes. We don't say to you in Polish on it. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry. Okay, so right now is there is actually a proposal and second. All in favor. All in, it's a unanimous. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think it's going to be one. Can you put that in the ministry, shall we? Councillor John Ashworth took him on the road. I'll put Town Clark. Town Clark asked to investigate. Yeah. John, what's his name? John. Yes. What's his name? John. Yes. Yes. Sorry, John. Yes. Is it a four year post, by the way? That was sad. Right now, the next one is uh, Abbey Wood um, Splats Group. Um, there, there is a, right now Andy Wood being representing in that one. It's a conservation group. Um, so, Andy, you were interested? Any, anybody? Okay. Okay. Anyway, so just to let me know that, which you know anyway, it's a non-voting observer slash participant role. I was informed yesterday by the, uh, but I think you know that anyway because I think that changed last year, didn't it, with their constitution? Was it because Black Friday? Okay. Anybody to second? And yeah, Frank. Frank. Yeah. So is that John Ash? Sorry, Roger. Thank you. All in favour? Yes. This one is the next one is Town and Parish Council Forum. It's um, normally they'll take the chair of the council and the town clerk. That is how it is set for the town, town council, council, council forum, or if the chair of council is unable to attend, they will pass it to the council to attend. So, anybody? Yeah, Roger. Ed Ross, second. All in favour? Unanimous. Thank you very much. 
Next one is uh, training associations. Right now, we need one more person to at least. Um, okay. Interested. Anybody? Anybody else interested? You're Fred. Uh, oh, Twini. Ah, uh, Twini. <laughs> okay. Twin. Shamsama. Yes, that's. I've been in that uh, Twini committee for some time, so a few years. And Brian came, and he came. So it is an interesting one. So you will be able to host the people coming, give them hospitality, and things like that. How come you never mentioned that? No, you cannot move that <laughs> Okay, thank you. Sorry, okay, we need a proposal, so I'd like that. Uh, Brian proposed. Anybody? Any other people? Okay. Seconded by Roger. All in favor? That's also unanimous. Almost everyone except two of them. Okay. That's one last Yeah. Okay. Abstentions? Okay. Yeah. 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 Next one is the Volunteer Center Steering Group. This is um, for the patch oh, okay. Good. Thank you. And this is actually, yeah. Who, who been there? Tony Griffiths. Have you been to that meeting? Uh, I haven't, actually. I, for whatever reason, I, uh, I was either busy or something. I couldn't get on. Yeah. So I to Okay, right now there's an interest by Ed Gross, shown an interest. Um, Anybody to propose that? And town club, anybody else? Uh, two people can go, if any, if you are anybody is interested. What, the volunteer? The volunteer. That's the daytime one. That's the daytime meeting. Oh, is it? Yeah, no, it's not. Anybody to? Okay, anybody to propose that in the second bit? Yeah, second. Ben. All in favor? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think that concludes that part of the meeting. Number nine. Okay. <laughs> Number ten. The approve to approve the following resolution in respect of the main accounts and the petty cash accounts of the Bradley Stoke Town Council that 10.1, you want to read that? Sure. Do you want to read that? Can you read it? You can read that. You can read that. Yeah. 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 First job as an RFO. Sorry? So 10.1, uh, Barclays Bank yeah. shall continue as our primary bankers. Uh, the bank shall be authorised to honour all cheques, debit card and internet transactions or other orders for payment drawn, made or accepted on behalf, including bills of exchange and promised three notes, even if any such payment causes any accounts to be overdrawn or increase an existing overdraft, provided that such documents are signed by any two and any one in respect to the petty cash account in accordance with the specimen signatures. Uh, the bank shall act on all specimen signatures in accordance with any instructions, notice, request or other document in writing concerning our account, including the opening of, an, of new accounts, affairs or property. The bank uh, shall be sent a copy of any future resolutions that affect the terms of the above resolutions. The bank shall be sent a copy of any changes in rules and regulations or bylaws. The bank shall be notified of any change of committee members. The bank shall be notified in writing of any change of officials authorised to sign on our behalf. And the bank shall otherwise continue to operate our accounts in accordance with the mandate. Uh, the above resolution will also apply to the Lloyds Bank account should the financial situation change 
and or council approve changing the primary banker in line with the financial regulations. Um, just for new councillors, that wording is actually preset by the, the bank, so we we have to officially adopt it annually. Yeah. So, yeah. John proposed that. Anyone then seconded it? All in favour? It's a unanimous. Okay, next one is the uh, next bit to approve six signatories authorized to sign on council's behalf. <clears throat> we have uh, the thing is a signature, changing signatures is sometimes a pretty good thing right now in the bank. Uh, but unfortunately, we need to actually change at least one. Uh, it will be better to continue with that. I think so. Oh, anybody can, if anybody wants to join in, that's uh, fine. I'll read it out. Uh, you hope the you have the paper with you. Yeah. So it's uh, Barclays and Lloyds Bank. Do you want to read? It? Yeah. Uh, so this is following on from the uh, previous resolution, so this is to set the signatures for the year. Uh, we, have, uh, we have existing signatures, um, most of whom have been re-elected, um, but we have a couple of uh, councillors um, that either didn't stand or were not re-elected, so it's up to council now to decide whether just to withdraw their, take their signatures off of the accounts or replace it with um, another signatory. Um, and uh, as uh, Tom was previously saying, the amount of work involved in, in changing massive um, sort of signatures, it's time consuming and it's not the easiest thing to do. So um, at the moment we would suggest maintaining the existing signatures except for, uh, and I'll go through um, each bank, and you've got details in your agenda in your pack. Agenda pack. Uh, so uh, Barclays and Lloyds, uh, the current signatures are uh, uh, Sharon Patella, John Ash, Roger Avenin, Paul Hardwick, Andy Ward, Brian Hopkins, Hopkinson and Ben Randalls. Uh, Paul Hardwick uh, is no longer a councillor, so it, these are Barclays is our main account. So it's whether we just take him off, or whether somebody else would like to uh, come in as a signature. Anybody interested? I'd like to come in. Anybody else? Okay. So first we need to actually remove Paul, isn't it? That's the first thing. Paul has to come off, off. Yes. yes. So it's whether council want another signature to replace him or, or just take him off. The more signatures we have, to be honest, uh, the, the safer it is. Mm. And people that are available during the day oh, as well. Are, uh, so yeah. I'm, I'm day, so I've got availability during the day, so I don't know. Yeah, that's okay. But they, they, right now, is most of the transactions are online. Yes. It? Yeah. So um, I think yeah, yeah, first remove, and right now we have two people interested. I'm sure. I think uh, since we just take two one off to make the process sweeter, we should keep only one as well than adding more counselors onto the signatures. Uh, it's easier. I mean, I think if we are actually adding them, and it's actually a four-year process, we, this is a new council, so we can continue with that. That's the thing, so, isn't it? Well, it, it's a council decision. Uh, okay, so that is actually two people right now shown interest. Nikki shown interest, Brian proposed. Anybody to second that? And, uh, to second. Uh, Rose, anybody to second? Elaine? Right, hang on one second. Let's just... So, first of all, can we... Propose and second to remove Paul because yeah, I guess that's, that's going to be the yeah. one. I propose that. Yeah. And can we have a vote on that? No, Tom proposed and Ben seconded for that. So if you can have a vote on that. To All in favour? Paul Hardwick. 
That's the point. No, but he is still registered as a signatory, so you do well, have no, to. It makes it, it makes it squeaky. Yeah, that's that. Yeah. It's the, technical. The yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, you would Tec not believe the hoops we have to jump through. For on okay, so that part is over. Sorry, was that unanimous? Yes. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Two nominations. Ryan nominated and so seconded Brian. by nominated Nikki Hello and seconded by Ed Rose. Yeah. Um, who actually proposed um, uh, proposed Elaine. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's already seven. Okay, so who is seconded? Um, uh, Ali. Rachel is right, we need to be screened early. So, do council just want to replace with one person or two? Because if you replace with two, you could go into both of them. It's up to you. I would just like to propose, propose one swap, swap in, swap out one councillor because the Lloyd's Bank account has got enough councillors on it as it stands. Yeah. So, so just one. Okay. So, okay. Uh, by Ben, second day. Terry. All in favour? Can I count? One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen. Okay, so okay. it's a one. Against? I think so. Next, yep, straight. Yeah, come please. One more. One's against. One against. Oh. <laughs> and one abstention. Okay, thank you for that. So you're just going for one, so now you've had... Nikki Hammer has been nominated, which was proposed by Brian and seconded by Ed and Elaine Hardwick. Who is proposed? proposed? Who proposed Elaine? Proposed yeah, anybody second? Keep it in the family. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Andy? Uh, Andy. So we can have a vote then for Nikki Hammer. Mm, yeah. So vote for, well, so vote for Nikki. Vote, voting for Nikki. One. Okay, voting for uh, Elaine. One, two, three, four, five, six. So are there three abstentions? Three people not? Because okay. obviously Nikki and Elaine are not voting, but there must be an abstention from somebody. Not okay, then. So that gives you the casting vote. I will vote if a new person shown interest. Yeah, I'll vote for Nikki. Next one is Cambridge and Counties. Right now, Sharon Patela and Andy Ward are the authorised officials. Marion Ward and Franklin are the other signatories. They need to, to sign. So here, Marion Ward is no longer a councillor, and that has to be replaced, isn't it? So whether we need to please start with this stretch, removing Aunt Marion here from here, <laughs> whether we have to do that? Well, yeah, I think you do, but what I would suggest, perhaps all you could do all three, three together. Yeah, that'll be better. As they're all got the same signatories. And yes. Um, this is linked to our investments, so once a year we have to act quite quickly with signatures to, to get the best rates. Uh, so I'm probably two people on this one would be advisable that are available daytime so that they can call into the office and sign so that we can get the investment paperwork out as soon as possible. Yeah. We had to do it this year and, and we did manage to time to some pretty good rates. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's a very quick turnaround on the investments. Okay. 
it, Ten minutes? Give it in a day. <laughs> anyway, the thing is, you don't live very far, isn't it, Nikki? Yeah, so it's just to the street, so open, isn't it? But one of the things is, does it matter? Uh, is it all for all three you're talking about? Yeah. Right. So this is Cambridge and Counties Bank, United Trust Bank, and the CCLA Local Authorities Property Fund. So three, uh, we need to replace one person. Okay. So any. So any, could you first of all just agree to remove Marion Ward from? You haven't proposed and seconded that. Propose that, and Mike seconded it. And then we have one more. Right, and then if you can have a vote on that one. So this is just to remove Marion as a signatory from yeah. this? Yeah. So you know, it's, uh, no, one. That's a bar one. Are you against yeah. this? Is this a stupid rule? Yeah. Okay. Right, thank you. Okay. So, and now you need to decide whether or not you want one or two signatories. The uh, RFO advice is that you have two more people. Yeah, on each of them. Well, it can be the same two on all of them. Yeah. yeah. I don't mind putting my name forward because, as you know, I'm retired and I'm a signature anyway. But yeah. It's up to anyone else who wants to do it. I don't mind. Okay. Else That's so. it. I propose John and Roger to be signatures. No, no, I don't. No, not Roger. No. Well, John and Roger. 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 It's just that we need as much um, yeah. Because it out. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, so, sorry. Can you just then propose two. that you're going to have two? two yeah. Okay. So that is a proposal. Um, the Tony Griffiths proposed. Anyone to second it? Yeah. It's a lots of people. Yeah. So I have to select. It. The first one was Franklin. Yeah. All in favour? Yeah. Unanimous. Okay. Okay, so that's anybody to propose that? Ben Randalls, Franklin. All in favour? Okay. Sorry, can you just put your hands up again? Just check so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Except what? 12 in favour. Abstentions? 3 abstentions. Thank you very much. Okay, that part is also over. Number 12, we are progressing. <laughs> appointment of auditors to the town council, not. Appointment of external auditor. This, yeah, this is in our original project. Um, it's a not appointment. It should be noted that PKF Little John LLP were appointed for a five-year period 2017 to 2022 following council decisions to opt in to the SAA procurement exercise for a five-year period as approved by the full council on the 9th of March 2016. That's minute 11.1.3. The current contract will therefore continue until completion of 2021-22 audit. Note, next one. <laughs> appointment of internal auditor to the town council. It should be noted that South Coast Council has been appointed as internal auditors on a three-year rolling contract due to the specific specialized work involved as proposed by the full council on 13th March 2019, that is minute 11.3, and this will continue for the 2019-2020 to 2021-2022 audits before being reviewed. So I think just it's a matter. We need a proposal and a second. Okay, so that is the notes. So that's fine. Yeah. Can we? Number thirteen. To receive two thousand eighteen slash two thousand nineteen year end figures, an audited and adjusted forward five year budget plan. We have in our pack. Yes. You want to say? Yes, Rachel. Thank you. Um, you you have in your packs a, a report. Um, so the together with uh, the five year 
um, forward plan. New councillors will get used to this. This is our sort of financial backbone, really. Um, it's, it's a living document, and we link all the budgets and forecasting to this forward plan so that we are having a look five years ahead to ensure that we are in a position to um, maintain services um, for, the, for sort of the long run. So um, I'll just read out the report just so that it's um, on tape for the AGM. I'll, I'll try and skip through bits where I can for John. <laughs> so the summary of the 2018-19 year end position, year -end position as at the 8th of May 2018. Actually 19. Oh, 19, yep, sorry, 19. Um, has been no. incorporated with the <laughs> within the five year forward plan, which uh, I held up earlier. Uh, the current position shows the 2018 19 year end surplus of approximately 82,000. No other year-end adjustments are currently envisaged, although a final review will be completed over the next few weeks. And the financial statement will be set on Friday the 31st of May, ready for the annual internal audit on the 10th and 11th of June. Uh, the five-year forward plan was reported to April Finance. Um, and that encompassed a larger than projected year end surplus. Uh, the largest under spends were identified and, um, to members. And in addition, councillors decided to allocate sufficient funds from the unallocated youth reserve and move it into the skate park replacement reserve in order to produce a, an £80,000 balance for protection of the future asset. Um, within the report, I've listed um, year-end uh, adjustments that I've made to the budget. I don't think these have to be accepted uh, because they are, um, they've already either been approved or it's direct, directly linked to sort of year-end um, accounting adjustments. So I'll quickly go through. Um, grant income, we had to highlight that uh, the Beacon Play area flooring was donated by Friends of the Jubilee Green. Um, miscellaneous uh, income. Council had previously uh, approved the sale of uh, the Astra van that uh, was replaced by a Mitsubishi van um, over the last uh, month or so. Uh, bank and investment income, the final figures had come in um, from uh, all the investments and dividends, so that was just uh, an adjustment uh, up to £8,696. Um, I'm highlighting that because it was a very good performance against the estimated budget that was set over a year ago uh, at £5,825, so that's a really good result on the investment and bank income. Uh, youth grant funding, uh, the, um, this had already been mentioned to council previously, 30,000 had been secured by, the, uh, by uh, Graham Baker um, to fund youth work over the next three years, paying 10,000 a year, so that has been applied. Um, Announced in April, uh, sad news that uh, Bouncing Babies Group had uh, closed, uh, so that reduced our uh, exposure to service level agreements that we pay out to local groups. Uh, the Youth uh, Core Funding had a final adjustment just linked to the annual water and electricity linked to the skate park. Um, so the estimated accrual was uh, just over £800 for both uh, electricity and water for the whole year, which I think is pretty good, and is down to the LED lighting that we've uh, installed. Um, uh, the play equipment had to be increased, linked to the donation of the uh, flooring donated by Friends of Jubilee Green that had already been mentioned. Um, 
The vehicle replacement reserve was increased by £1,000, being the agreed price at which the Astra van was sold, that had also previously been mentioned. And then um, just the money was moved between the youth and allocated reserve and the skate park replacement reserve, um, just moving the money between the two to ensure that 80,000 is there to protect the skate park for future sort of maintenance uh, ongoing for the long term. So uh, in addition, the five year forward plan has now encompassed the fifth year being 2023-24, bit scary to look that far ahead, but um, so uh, that's in line with the um, financial regs that we do a five year projection. Um, and following all the underspends and all the changes, um, and this is highlighted in this report here, at the very, for those new councillors, um, it deals with the position for each financial year. And the end of the fifth year, which is shown in the pink column, is 2023-24. And at this stage, it is a projection um, moving forward. It's showing um, a year-end surplus of just over 56,000, which is brilliant, uh, up to what we were expecting when the 2018-19 the budget was set. So that will go into the um, forward um, budget protection reserve to fund the sixth year. So it just gives a shock absorber um, so that the precept doesn't yo yo. It protects the community. And I think it, well, historically it's worked really well. And bearing in mind that we are heading into unknown times, possible um, higher inflation, as, as much, you know, sort of security that we can put in to preserve surfaces and to protect um, the precept um, that the forward plan seems to be doing its job. Final figures won't be um, available until um, after the internal audit has been completed. Um, so that will be presented to um, June Finance and then for formal adoption by uh, the special June Council meeting. Um, for the official pre-audit sign-off. Okay. Right. As chair, do you want to finance? Do you want to say anything? Things, as always, are running smoothly. Well, there's considered good focus. Yes, right. Yeah, I would just want to say that when you are some other councils, your document, your five-year plan, is absolutely brilliant. And uh, it's nice to see last year that uh, crept into the, the fact that the reduction of the capital interest from the, uh, from our, the office building came <coughs> off at the end. And this year it's crept forward another year, so, uh, and that will obviously uh, help a lot with this with these balances at the end. So uh, we'll be owning our own building, and we were renting it, and I think we saved us council a lot of money over the last few years. Thank you. Anybody to say, want to say any inputs, contributions to this agenda? Okay. So, to receive, to end, anything to do? No. Thank you. We will move towards the number 14. To receive and approve statutory documents requiring the signature of the chair and the proper officer. This is your agenda pack. This is in your agenda pack. This is your health and safety general statement of policy, which includes the health and safety policy, the fire policy, manual handling policy, loan working policy, play area inspection policy, smoke free policy, and stress policies. <laughs> I just, need a, just need a proposer and a seconder to sign the general statement of policy because all the policies are included and, within and that. Brian, actually, yeah. Ben Randall? No. Okay. <laughs> All in favour? Thank you. And then the uh, chair and the uh, 
proper officer, i.e. myself, then sign it. Number 15, right now is an important part for the uh, for the community. There's a public question time, the 15 minutes, so the meeting will be formally adjourned for this item. Residents of Bradley Stoke wishing to make a statement or ask a question are asked to give their name and address before making a statement or asking their question. Yes. Before we do, um, I'm surprised that you haven't asked uh, the new councillors to identify themselves because as a member of the public I've no idea how many new councillors you can ask that question <laughs> you've got because it's we got the names there so in round I beg your sorry okay. what did you say chairman there is uh, with the names there so yeah. that's the reason why you can ask the question no problem councillors are willing to click that's not a very practical solution. Uh, we can't see those from here. Uh, well, could you ask them just... So can you say your name and address to start with? Pardon? Oh, can you your name and address. Peter Cowles, uh, Blue Bell Gardens. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, could they just stand up for 10 seconds? Oh, yeah. Raise the hands, it's fine. Oh, yes, that's fine. Uh, new councillors, they are oh, you like <laughs> <laughs> There's a new councillors. Okay, so that's six, yeah. is it? Yeah. You are really yeah. Yeah, yes. That's very useful. I'm surprised the council but hadn't thought it's, of doing that. It, it's uh, and, and welcoming them. We've heard no welcome to them. Yeah, to be honest it's uh, uh two um two new councillors, Fabrizio and Nikki, Edward, uh, Ed, Michael. Michael is a seasoned politician. He was a county councillor. Okay, so he should not be here, invest minister. Uh, but thank you, thank you everyone for the new councillors. I think uh, thanks for uh, paid to actually uh, say that. Uh, also, Ed Ross came back. He returned back to the council after a small term. Yes. You said your you said your address is Bluebell Gardens. Where whereabouts is that? Uh, Savages Wood Road. Sorry, it's the flats. The flats. It's flats. Oh, it's oh, the flats. Yeah. So I was thinking of the bluebells. So no. Yeah, there are three areas called bluebell. Yeah. Yes. Are you okay? Are you prepared? Councillor. Oh dear, how stupid I know him well. Uh, Andy Ward promised me a uh, hearing aid for this meeting, but I haven't seen it. A roving mic. Unless you have time to be able to hear what was going on, <laughs> which might keep me quiet. Oh, I don't think. Um... <laughs> so how do I? How does that improve my hearing, Andy? It does. It, 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 it said if other people were speaking. Ah. If there were other people, because you were issues, you couldn't hear other people who were speaking. And you were translating. Oh, all right. Oh, well, that's only so part of the Anyway, that's it's an improvement, but it doesn't help the hearing. Yeah. Sir, it's a 50 Pete, it's a 15 minutes. Yeah. Does that work? Yes, it does. For the moment, but I'll let other people have a chance. Thank you. The next one. I'm not sure I need this. Um, this isn't from me, this is from Richard um, Aguilina? Aguilina, who is sat here, uh, from One Juniper Way. He says, I've lived in Bradley Stoke for 18 years and have seen councillors elected and the makeup of the council changed many times. The council has always worked together irrespective of political party representation. I urge this elected council to work together for the benefit of the residents of Bradley Stoke. And 
I would agree with that. Does she have reason to think that the council don't work here? She must, otherwise she wouldn't have asked that question. He. He. So what was worrying? No. Excuse me. Next one. Anybody else? Excuse me, Sarah. Can I give it to Steve? Hello. Um, Yeah, I'd just like to um, make an observation on the uh, an item further on the agenda, which is the multi uh, multi use games area. Um, so um, this is the thing that's proposed to be built on the overflow car park um, here at the Jubilee Centre. Um, so I have made this comment really um, previously in relation to the existing sports equipment that's there. Um, and I'm concerned that um, there's a danger of um, vehicles being damaged um, when people are using this sports equipment. Um, So I'm reading here that the car park um, is frequently empty out of school hours and can be safely secured with the gate. Therefore, once the gate is secure, it could be used as an informal area for ball games. But that's all well and good saying um, um, you know, it's safe, well, I interpret that as saying it's, it's safe for the participants to use the equipment when cars are prevented from going into the area, which is a, all one good. But my concern is people using the sports equipment when cars are actually parking there. And I've had this situation when I've had to park over there and people have been kicking footballs around. Um, and I think... Uh, the existence of this equipment just encourages them to do that and I think uh, people's property is at risk. Um, my daughter has, has, a, has a car which she, she has kept outside our house and, and um, some children playing in the road there have actually put quite a sizable dent with a football uh, by a football landing on the bonnet. Um, apparently it's more likely to do that under warm conditions and if the engine's warm the metal is softer. So vehicles can easily be damaged by um, footballs um, you know, um, being kicked against them. So that's an observation. Thank you. Yes, Steve. Yes, Ed Rose uh, and Ben right. Yes, Ed. Thank you for asking the question, Council. My answer is based on practicality of most places where people park cars. And that is it. There are always signs by any businesses, county councils, uh, other observations that state you park here at your own risk and that any damage is sustained to that vehicle is to the owner and how that is. Now, social responsibility comes in whereby I believe that you should make it clear that where there's an area that sports is being played with balls that damages could be occurred. Yeah. So, in, in, in response, we have the responsibility to make people assured that if you do park your car there, it's that. Because the control of people, whether they kick a ball in an area designated for it, or kick a ball in an area not designated for it, is down to those individuals. Yeah, but with respect, with respect, this is a car park, first of all, it's been created as a car park. Um, and, and so the council has the choice of whether it encourages the playing of all games, specifically in that area, or putting this equipment elsewhere, um, away from vehicles. That is the choice the council has. Um, you know, I, I accept what you're saying, but I think the council has a choice, um, you know, which could mitigate against the, um, the issue that I'm foreseeing. Thank you, sir. Stephen, would you have a particular site where, or a, a different location? No, I, don't, I don't have a, an alternative proposal. I'm just okay. We can note that. We will note that. Um, right now, let me take to okay. Ben. Okay. Yes. Sorry, uh, Joan. I have a little bit of experience of this from uh, Northampton. And I think uh, two points have actually been raised here in Muddle. 
One is a Muga, and the other is use of the car park. Now, where I used to live, we had a Muga. It had 10-foot-high fencing around it, uh, and there was absolutely no worry about the balls or anything coming out of it. That is totally different from people wanting to kick a football around on hard surface in the car park. And I think we were in danger of getting those two facts muddled. Agreed. Agreed. Keith Craddock. Yeah, Chair, I totally agree with what Mike said. I mean, muggers, multi-use games areas, yes. as they're called, they yes. have high projectile fencing around it. It's very costly, but it does do the job, and it keeps balls and everything else within that area. And if that is what we're going to have, that is a duty that we have to make sure that that fencing is... Can councillors come back to that on 18.2.3, so then we can discuss that? Yes, uh, can I call Ben Rantles to a I So this is in response to um, last Wednesday's uh, public meeting of or annual meeting of the town um, during public questions there on um, in respect to the Willowbrook Centre car park and what we had uh, written to Bradley uh, what we'd written to the Willowbrook Centre um, from the council at the time uh, during on the 24th of April so I just wanted to read that and we've had a response that Sharon will read um, read out um, so I wrote to the council uh, as Sharon and myself I uh, said we're writing on behalf of Bradley State Town Council to express our concern over Willowbrook Centre's recent reconfiguration of traffic calming measures entering the site. Residents of the surrounding area have directly raised concerns with the council as to the extreme nature of these me measures which are having significant adverse effects to the highways in the town. Traffic ingress to the site is slow to such an extent that it is causing Bradley State Way to become extremely congested at peak times. On behalf of the council, we'd like to positively encourage you to reconsider the changes for the benefit of our residents, ultimately your customers. We are fully aware that the traffic calming changes have been met, that have been made are on private property and do not constitute the adopted highway by the unitary authority. Nevertheless, we'd like you to consider our concerns and open a dialogue where appropriate. And Sharon's now got the response to that letter. Bear with me, because it's quite a long response. Yeah, it's vivid, concise. <laughs> uh, no, not really, because it, yeah. it's all relevant, I guess, really. Yeah. Okay. So it's from Andy Wynne, the Centre Manager at the Willowbrook Centre. Dear Mrs Patel, thank you for your letter dated the 24th of April 2019 in reference to concerns about the traffic calming measures on the approach road to the Willowbrook Centre. The letter itself, from the information I have, is incorrect in a couple of its assertions and assumptions. I would like to take you through the recent history of warts and all here and will address a series of points and questions that are posed or intimated in the letter or have been asked by customers who have contacted us. Why was any work to the speed bumps required? Over recent months, a number of speed bumps on the approach road have come away from the ground and were no longer safe to vehicles to leave in place. These have been removed by the Willowbrook team. <clears throat> Why not replace the island style speed bumps with more of the same? On the approach road, there, have been, there has been an issue for several years caused by this style of speed bump. We've received numerous complaints about drivers avoiding the bumps by driving down the middle of the road between the two islands and causing a hazard to oncoming vehicles. The Willowbrook team have witnessed numerous near misses. For example, on the Thursday the 17th of March, prior to the change in style of the speed bumps, we have reviewed an hour of CCTV footage between 9 o'clock and 10 a.m., 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. In this period, 60 vehicles drove down the middle of the road between the bumps. Of these, two did so when there was a vehicle coming in the opposite direction. There has also been a number of complaints directly to us and via a local councillor over the last 18 months or so relating to the speed of vehicles on the approach road and also not stopping at the pedestrian crossing. For reference, below is an excerpt from an email received from a local councillor in April 2018. Can I please ask you if there is anything you're able to do to prevent an accident which sounds like it could be imminent? The road is a private road and is therefore your responsibility, so I'm asking for your help in the first instance. Further, an excerpt from a resident correspondence included on the email. 
Number one, although the road is marked at 10 miles an hour, there is no enforcement of this. A lot of cars are travelling around 30 miles an hour from what I can tell, some even faster. I do not think this is a safe speed next to a pavement with kids, some of whom are on bikes. Number two, the zebra crossing near the pet Tesco's petrol station. Some cars drive northbound too fast round the corner towards the zebra crossing, then do not want to slow down. This is a shame because a lot of drivers are quite courteous. The bad drivers are causing a danger to pedestrians here, in my opinion. So that was the end of that one. The next question, why use these particular speed bumps? They slow cars down too much or might damage my car? The speed limit on the road is 10 miles an hour and always has been. It is this point and complaints as noted above which influence the style of speed bumps. Our research showed that the style of the bump that have now been installed are seen as industry standard for roads with slow limits, particularly private roads. This style is available in two sizes, 50mm, which are referred to as 10 mile an hour bumps, and 75mm, which are referred to as 5 mile an hour bumps. On conducting research locally, we identified several other car parks with the same style of bump in either size, 50mm at Cribs Causeway Retail Park, although I note that having been in place for several years, these were removed over the last week or so, Fox Den Road at Stoke Gifford Retail Park, and 75mm at Bradley Stoke Community School and the Cabot Circus Car Park ground floor. A number of further car parks have the same style, but without measuring it is unclear which size is installed. So that's Bradley Stoke Community School and Bradley Stoke Parkway Station, brackets rear entrance. There is another car park with a moulded concrete version of these narrow bumps, which is higher than 75mm, Air Hop and pa Patchway Industrial Park. The bumps installed on the approach road to the Willowbrook Centre during March 2019 are the 50mm, 10 mile an hour version in line with the speed limit. Therefore, this style of bump and the higher version is relatively common in the local area and is commercially available standard style of bump for low speed limit roads. These bumps are designed to be driven over just below 10 miles an hour, not over 10 miles an hour, but also not under 5 miles an hour. They feel harsher at 3 miles an hour than they do at 8 miles an hour. Next point, the new bumps are causing huge traffic issues. In my experience, when new traffic calming measures of any type are installed, it takes drivers a few goes to determine the appropriate speed. Therefore, it is understandable that there would be heightened traffic in the early days and weeks of the new measure of the approach road, on the approach road. On the second Saturday after the bumps were installed, there was large traffic issues emanating from the Willowbrook Centre car park. This was in part due to drivers slowing too much for the bumps as they were new and drivers were still feeling them out. However, there is a bigger picture. This Saturday, or that Saturday, combined the new bumps with three events that traditionally raises footfall at the Willowbrook. It was a warm but not overly hot spring day. It was payday weekend after a five week month and it was the day before Mother's Day. On an average Saturday, there are 15,500 people that enter the mall at Willowbrook Centre from the footfall counting cameras in the past two year, sorry, footfall cameras. In the past two years, there have been less than five days when the footfall has exceeded 16,000 for a day. On this Saturday, footfall was 18,000, which was the second highest day of footfall in the last two years, the time period I have reviewed. There were 14% more cars entering the car park than the average Saturday. For context, this equated to 600 cars an hour from 9am until 5pm. Adding that, many of these slowed down to way below the 10 mile per hour queues backing queues, backing down Bradley Stoke Way, prompting social media uproar. Frankly, the scale of queues on this day surprised us. In retrospect, we should have waited two further weeks to install the new bumps after Mother's Day weekend. Since then, we have no evidence of queues backing down either Bradley Stoke Way or Brook Way. At peak times, there are occasional queues on Savages Wood Road. However, these do seem to be reducing week on week as more and more people adjust to driving over the bumps at an optimum speed of 8 to 10 miles per hour. There have been two other occasions where we have had calls stating that there was traffic on Bradley Stoke Way and the new speed bumps were the cause. Each of these proved to be caused by other issues. On the first occasion, Savages, Wood, Savages Road was clear at the time. The queue was from an incident on the A33, which I presume should be the A38. 
and tracked down past down to past the Willowbrook Centre. On the second occasion, Savage, Savage's Wood Road was busy due to the end of the day at Meadowbrook Primary School and the large number using the Savage, Savage's Wood Road pedestrian crossing. On this occasion, there was no queue on the Willowbrook Centre approach road. We have monitored driving patterns and queue levels in the recent weeks and believe that the traffic levels are reducing week on week. Anecdotally, I have stood for lunchtime period on several weekday lunchtimes and watched the first speed bump. A few weeks ago, over half the cars slowed almost to a stop to drive over the bump. During this time, the slowed traffic reached the Savages Wood Road roundabout for five or six periods of less than a minute on each occasion. During the same survey yesterday, far fewer cars slowed dramatically and the queue behind the first bump did not get beyond four cars. And the final point comment, Willowbrook Centre will lose customers, have lost customers. Mm -hmm. It may be that a small number of customers now don't visit or don't drive to visit, however there is no evidence that the footfall has been halved. That's a long reply. It took on last 10 minutes. Just tried to address the point. Yes, yes. Um, can, yes. Yes, Kate. Yeah, I, I think that um, Willowbrook would be wise to do a survey, perhaps with the help of a journal, and find out just how many people have been put off shopping at the Willowbrook. Mm. I know plenty of them. And God help us if the council start putting in speed bumps like they put in there, we'll have a traffic jam to the other side of town. You'll, you'll grind the whole lot. You'll grind it in the hole. <coughs> yes, Tommy. Well, one, one point, uh, Chair, is um, that the, the statement that the uh, shopping manager has said about his footfall. Um, there's no breakdown of how many of those people were actually pedestrians no. or how many were actually mm. car sharing. Mm. So although uh, <coughs> the footfall had increased it, whatever day it was, you can't say that it was necessarily there's no proportion to work out how many actually cars. Yeah. Okay, yes. Mike, then I like. Uh, two points, I think, uh, Joan. Firstly, I think the footfall figure is a very much a ballpark one, and I think one would actually need to break it down and see how many were actually shoppers and how many were school children just passing through, because when I go there, that seems quite high. The other thing I was going to say is I now avoid the Willowbrook Centre whenever possible, and I go and shop at Sainsbury's yeah. precisely because of the Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when they're saying about that there was accidents on, on the A38, that's to me, it's a little bit of a shiny brown corner and the savage would round about by the brook, uh, by the pub, is chocker every Saturday. And to get out so that we can go wherever, same as with shopping, you know, mm -hmm. if we have to wait about five minutes. So it's, it's where they're saying it's due to that, so I don't think that. Mm. Yeah, yes, Tori. I was just going to say, going back to the positive about um, the old bumps being detached or whatever, mm. um, and people driving around the middle of the road, then would it not have been a better solution to reattach them and then make them longer so that mm. they are yeah. across the whole road? Mm. Mm. Yes. Yeah, all the, all the, all the ones that come up and they spread. You may have to repeat that. Okay, that's okay. Severe, those ones are really severe. So, would it possibly 
been a better solution to look at than using what they've already got. Yes, Ben, then Kid. Terry raised the point, I was just going to say about the rate map, where they, they put them in the middle of the road as well. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes, Kid. There, the uh, councillor for Braden Avenue, who I think uh, many of you may know it, he campaigned to get rid of the uh, chicanes and the horrible hunks that we had on Braden Avenue. We now have tar ones, they're much more friendlier to the car, and we have a cross in there as well, and we have a doctor's surgery. And I haven't seen one person knocked down there yet, mm. and I haven't seen anybody crash there for probably the best part of six, seven years. Or presumably traffic as well. And, and next, well, over the next month, when we have the closure of Gypsy Batch, I'm sure the journal and everyone else will correct me if I'm wrong, you watch the traffic increase up Braden Avenue. You know, I don't think you'll see much speeding going on up there. Okay. Yes. Gemma, why does the Sorry, um, the councillor. Yes, why don't right. The public question is finished, is it? I'll come back to you. Sorry. Right. Okay. Um, basically, the Speed bumps are not just damaging cars, they're damaging people. There are people which have had operations on their backs and all sorts of things. And we don't expect, even if you're driving at a slow speed, the jolt you're getting from them is absolutely incredible. And if people, if they want to slow cars down, then the speed tarmac bumps right across the road are absolutely brilliant because they do slow the cars down. You know, they, they said that they have got a problem with enforcement so that they need to put these things in. But this is just over the top. And the fact of the matter is, the other thing is, they sent a letter to us back, or we put something to them which we think is, is factual, and they've come back with this really large letter as if, you know, no one likes being told what they should be doing or what they shouldn't be doing, mm. but to be perfectly frank with you, what they sent back to us is basically get stuff, you're not interested in what you're saying, and you know, I, I really do feel that the Woodbrook is not actually cooperating with the town in any way, and I, I'm really un, un, unhappy about that. So, Have you thought of that? So I'm getting you sure. Uh, yes, yes, um, yes, Peter. Why does. 15 minutes is over, but I'll, I'm allowing you, please. <laughs> well, the councillors have taken up some of our 15 minutes. No, 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 it's past that. It's past that. <laughs> Well, 10 minutes on this subject. Um, a councillor last week's meeting wouldn't hear any questioning of the effectiveness of our police. Now, uh, I live overlooking uh, Savages Wood Road and the amount of speeding that goes on is huge. If the police turned out and showed themselves, which in my experience they do very little of, why don't they stand and stop cars that avoid these speed bumps and also let the speeders see they're being watched? They could cut a lot of this problem overnight. But I rarely see the police. But it seems to be uh, forbidden uh, to yes. even question whether yes. they're doing their job properly. Yes. Okay. Um, Tony, then end. Yes. Yeah. Chair, Peter, with all due respect, again, this is not the right meeting. The Community Engagement Forum, forum is where the police are. Don't tell me no. This is where the police are. And that's the right place to ask that question. Yeah, but you're responsible for making sure the police do their job here. No, no we, we, we don't have any policing powers. No, no, yes, yet. Well, you should. Mm, yeah, but, uh, yes. I will be raising them at the commissioning yes. gates. I have, Ed, but I will again. That's right. Edros, but that here is. is where it should start. Ed, 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 the gentleman's concerned to council to, to, to take a brief and agree with it. It, it should be the safe and strong community. Um, also, yes, yes. yes. Community, community engagement. What we, what we need clarity of. Yeah. Sorry, yes. could you just repeat? Yes. I couldn't hear. These. What we need clarity on is where there's public derision that the Police Act applies and policing could be engaged. Where you're on private property that belongs to Tesco, you cannot engage the police to police private 
attitude. That's why they have their own security force. Any restriction that Tesco's wishes to put in on their ground is under county planning rules that they must comply with. And if they wish to put whatever it is that in or out, it's up to them. We as a council can only raise concern as we have done by letter asking for cooperation to a private company to behave in a manner that helps everybody. And that's what we have done. With the aspect of speeding on Savage's Wood, I would suggest that that is public domain and that would be a case that you as a citizen are entitled to dial 111 and raise a complaint slash observation through to the police and state that speeding is there. Every incident of that adds weight to it. The police will then investigate if there's more calls. Secondly, you have the avenue of the Safer Stronger Committee that you can go to. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the Community engagement forum. Engagement as a uh, that. But those are the avenues that you have, sir. Uh, we sadly are not the Parliament and can't control the police. Okay, Kate. Uh, Chair, I mean, what's been said is absolutely right. The Community Engagement Forum is the forum for this, and anybody who wishes to raise issues of speed, there is Community Speed Watch that can be put in. Perhaps the gentleman could even volunteer for that, if you wish, and you'd be there in a fluorescent jacket and hold a gun out. And take the I first raised this 18 months ago. Well, the, I mean, the the is, okay, okay. Yes, yes, so yes. That's fine. That's fine. And, and but also yes, we we can actually speed watch would be a thing, but yes, do you want to say in, in the public? If you like. Uh, sorry, I, uh, yeah, Steve. I, I, I do know there was a speed visor on that road. Yeah, yeah. Um, we were just saying. At one point. Um, I think that was quite recently as well, yeah, wasn't it? Well, the end of last year. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But I don't know what's. But, um, yes, Pete, the thing is, we don't have any policing powers in Bradley Stroop. As a citizen, as a public, we can actually raise the concern, and as it's uh, from the residents uh, to the uh, council, but that's a private property, we have limitations. And so, I will, because of the conscious of the time, we need to actually move on as we all need to go. So, can we actually move on from this, uh, conclude this one and adjourn the meeting? Yeah. Yeah. Is it, is it, Chair, is it worth responding to that letter that we've received? So, we collected, I, I felt that we actually taken concerns from all the points right now we'll, yes and uh, we are not and i feel some of the points very valid points medical problems health problems as well as issues you know how where there are so many alternatives to do that we can actually why they haven't searched rather than one idea one remedy will not suffice and also i wonder if it might be worth uh, thinking of trying to get a face-to-face -face meeting because sometimes it's it's easier to Point across rather than just sort of exchange letters. We can actually think of that. I think the Willowbrook Centre would appreciate that. Yeah. Most okay. definitely. Yeah. Mm. Can we do that? So, does it leave? Because anybody, um, I think, in, unanimously, I feel, anybody sharing the same concerns, because Yes, Keith, yeah, you want I, to I, I think the Willowbrook should be invited to attend the community engagement forum. Mm. That they engage with people but, in Bradley Stone. But you know, I think it's. But they would like to have. Um, I think we will. We will can meet and talk and settle that because community engagement forum. It'll be a big discussion, and sometimes they may not appreciate. So that's. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. That's I'm it. not sure whether necessarily in a council meeting. I think an informal meeting. Informal meeting might, be, might be more better. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. I, we don't As want any conflict. Yeah, we would like, yes, we would like to have a, not a confrontation, but cooperation, we would, yes. Yes, can we move on, please? Yes. Yeah. We will adjourn the meeting. 16. To confirm the minutes of the council meeting held on 13 March 2019, you have your minutes in front. Yes. After the minutes. Okay. Yeah, so wait a minute. So that was Ben Randall's proposal? Yeah, but how we got through, I actually like to really go through.
run a game if you want. <laughs> That's it. You will have it in your agenda, man. That's a read through. Yes, they go to one, two. That's fine. Everyone agrees? All in favour? Yeah. Is that possible? Oh, yeah. Right, hang on, we need to take a vote on that because obviously some people weren't at the meeting so they won't be able to vote on it. I was there, yeah. Yeah, he was. So, he has been enthusiastic. All those in favour? So when I got the one from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, you were. You were. Yeah, you were. No, this is from March. Right, sorry, can you count again? One, Roger, 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 yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you were there. No, no, no. Uh, nine, um, so. nine. Nine in favour. Abstentions? One, One two, two, three, three four, five. Five, six. Against? Are you abstaining? <laughs> yeah. Abstaining. Yeah, so that's right. So can you initial every page and then sign and date the last page, please? That will take some time, so I will go to the next one. <laughs> Review of standing orders, financial regulations. Um, Rachel, you want to go through that? 17.1. It's that standing orders. Yeah. You can it's read just out to the review them whether there's any the changes that are required. Yes. You need to raise it now no. and then get a seconder, and then no discussion takes place, and then it comes back to the next, next council meeting, meeting, meeting for discussion and decision. Yes, Mike. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I was going to ask for the town clerk to uh, make a report for the next meeting, looking at the whole question of the size of committee and proportional representation between the parties. At the moment, we seem to have a bugger's muddle where there's no mass maximum size for a committee. You can have a committee of five or a committee of twelve. Uh, there's absolutely no logical uh, approach to it. I've never before been a member of a council it doesn't actually uh, stipulate the size of the committees, and once you've done that, proportionality, I believe, is a legal requirement. We can actually, yeah, yeah. That, okay, that's a proposal. Second, uh, um, but right now that is whether we need to do anything, that's it, uh, that's fine. No, hang on a minute, because I need to write all that down. <laughs> I think um, the, the Have you been, can I just ask, out of interest, have you been involved in parish and town councils before or the next level up? Because historically I've parish and I've been involved in county councils, I've been involved in district councils, and my ward in Northampton had four parish councils. And did they all have so that within their some of standing them did. orders? Some of them did. Yeah. And uh, that's mayor, some councils do that, okay. So anyway, that's a proposal and a second. So, so, fixed so looking at the size of committees. Mm -hmm. Did you have to get copies of that from the town and parish from wherever you were? I will talk to the town about that. Right <laughs> fixed recommendations on uh, size of committee. Yeah. Can I read? Yeah. Sorry, just coming back one. Um, I think, in fact, in most cases in Northampton, the parish councils were not fought on political lines. They're no, they're not. They're because parish and town councils are Different. traditionally yes. non political. Yes. They are everybody working for the good of the town. Right? Yeah, everybody. Everybody. Yeah. Which is what it should be. So but, this is a case where we've just had an election fought on political lines. Yes, so, but, you know, but I don't think you should express a personal view on that. No. No. no, I'm not. I'm just you stating. That's how it should be. Yeah. All right, I will retract that. I mean, it'd be nice if it was like that, but it wasn't, was it? I don't, I don't know because I didn't get involved. I'm not what? Not what? Yeah. But, 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 but you know, yeah, the, there are some councils like Western Supermer and other places where it's working. And uh, But right now, yes, Elaine, please. Hang on a minute. Proportionalization of 
I already said that they had that, but they cancelled it because they decided it was stupid. Yeah. And it was not so they got rid of it. Can I wait for Yes, yeah. so looking at the size of the committees with fixed recommendation on the size of the committee and then proportion. What's, what was the word? Proportion. Uh, proportionality. That was it. Proportionality of the late applicable committees. Okay. The right, yeah. Right, I'd, I'd like to bring a proposal that whoever is deputy mayor should automatically go up to uh, there. Oh, you're looking for stall? No, no. You're looking for stall? Hold on, John. Hold on, John. It was actually Roger's second president beforehand. That is why I want to bring this into place. So whoever is deputy mayor of Bristol and whoever is deputy mayor of Bristol. That's an interesting thing to be able to do. Sorry, sorry. It's dead at all now, you know. You really are. Thank you, but um, as right now, I would like to keep my Yeah, this is another proposal. No, because we can't. You now don't discuss it until the next full council meeting. This will be discussed you, you, within the next... You propose it and second it, and then it stands without but, any discussion. But, you know, the resolution only one, it has been uh, right now the second time, yeah. So, Okay. So there was a that's there was a proposal. Should be added to. But where, where is no power to actually? Is that different council? Different people. Why messed up? Why it, it's never that? written down anywhere. It, it isn't. It isn't. It was just something. So it happened. was a president. Okay, it was a president. Okay. So it's actually that's a, a, why the president was broken. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So, Brian, yes, go on this week. No. Yeah, I just basically like to say when when we were planned the, the different matter, you you moved up crosswind to this second thing, which which is fine, but my colleague here, you know, um put something out. And uh, yeah, fine, but I don't I don't I don't mind the work being done to look at it, but the reality is uh, you know, it should be looked at on both sides, so those people that are doing it and those people that aren't doing it. So the report's going to come back. It's got to be a balance report. They themselves, I mean, the Labour Party have been in charge of Patrick for 60 years plus, and they, they decided themselves that it wasn't fair because although councillors are elected by, by residents and they may be in some kind of minority party stream, they're elected by residents and therefore they are should be able to go to every single committee. And there shouldn't be any problem about them voting. And Patrick have put in some really onerous sort of devices to stop people doing that. So they might have like one person from another group to be able to go on a committee. And then if that person was unable to attend, they had to produce a doctor's note five days in advance to be able to let someone sub for them. And it just went on and on. And it was totally stupid. People are elected not just by, um, when they're elected, they are there to serve the whole public. And they're not just elected to serve the people that have voted them in. That is the situation. Simple as that. So if they're elected, they're on the council and they should be able to go to meetings and actually put their things forward and they should be listened to. And there shouldn't be any problem about that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So right, right now, that matter can be discussed in the next meeting. That, we need be, to, uh, that will obviously be for all councillors uh, yes. to yes. discuss yes. at the next meeting. Okay, yeah. we will. Right now, so that's 17.1. That is, I hope, is there any other recommendations to amendments to standing orders to stand adjourn without any discussion? So, any, any other proposals you want to make? Okay, anybody? So, I will go to the next one, 17.2, to agree any alterations to financial regulations. There are no changes um, envisaged at the moment from my side. Thank you, Christian. 18. We have a proposed and a seconder to keep them as they are. Can you pronounce it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anybody to yeah. So John and uh, Tony. John Tom. <coughs> John and Tom. Okay. Can I have a vote, please? Yes. All in favour? To keep the financial regulations as they session. are. Okay. So that is unanimous. Thank you. Number eighteen. We're going to the next one. To deal with any matters arising from the minutes of the council meetings held on 13th March 2019, not covered elsewhere on the agenda. 18.1, Rookway Activity Centre Site Ground Street de Development. Is it? Good job. Um, yeah, well, just a, an update really. Um, we've been chasing the um, procurement at Safe Gloss Council um, for. Uh, information on um, bona fide contractors, so we're just wait, waiting on that at the moment. So it's, 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 uh, it's rumbling on. Nothing more to report. Okay. I'll go to the next one 18.2 strategic planning recommendations. Can you actually go through that little plan? Sure. Um, yes, the first one the litter bins around Bradley Stoke. I've got an update on the um, anti-littering uh, poster campaign which councillors undertook last, at the end of last year. Um, the Town Council sent out 33 posters with covering letters to eight local schools, three local churches, five local pubs, three local Tesco stores, Willowbrook Centre, Aldi, nine local restaurants and takeaways, GP Surgery, Library and the Leisure Centre. The only response we had back was from the Willowbrook Centre, who asked for a digital version of the poster, which we sent them, so they could get it added to their digital screen display in the Willowbrook Centre. We also have the poster up in our notice board and on our website. We have the poster in the Bradley Stoke Journal, December 2018 edition, and it's also going again in the June 2019 edition. 
Um, the lack of response from all the letters and posters sent out is disappointing. The town council officers hoped that some of the businesses, etc., would have got back to us letting us know whether they'd put the posters up. So. Thank you. Next one. Anybody want to say yes. Well, I actually saw them eventually. I saw, saw them outside the doctor's surgery. Oh, there are, so there are some up around there. Yeah. Oh, oh, on so our notice boards, yeah. It didn't actually yeah. jump out at me, to be fair. I looked at that and I thought, mm. the dog one is better, I thought. Um, That's the poster, if yeah. anyone hasn't seen it. Oh, yeah. you know, it doesn't, they are quite bright. <laughs> it doesn't strike you as... Um, doesn't draw your attention immediately to that, I, I thought. Um, it reminded me of the old saying of Dennis Healy once when he was attacked by Jeffrey Howe he said it was like being savaged by a dead sheep oh. and you know <laughs> okay. it was probably it's about the same you know, I mean, it wasn't really fighting enough it wasn't forceful enough it was a start it was a start okay. you know, anybody, anybody see wants what he, see what effects it has thank you anybody wants to contribute to that Okay, otherwise next to 18.2.2 next stage skate park development including DDA accessible surface and access ramp outside container equipping interior of containers completion of landscaping project tools and equipment. Uh, quotes are currently being obtained for the DDA accessible surface and the access ramp outside the container. Thank so you. We'll come back when we have the relevant quotes. Brian, you want to say that? 18.2.3 Installation of uh, a multi-use games area to progress in Tanton with the leisure equipment for Jubilee Green. That was one of the points which was raised earlier. So anybody wants to really contribute? Because we have noted a few of the points already mentioned earlier. Do you want to add on to it? To Can I, shall I just go through the yeah, report? Please, yeah. So um, this has been this report, this update has been prepared by uh, Graham Baker, our youth worker. So following discussion at the BSTC, TS, BSTC strategic planning meeting in 2018, it was agreed to recommend to full council that BSTC continues to progress the installation of a MUGA in tandem with the installation of leisure equipment on the Jubilee Green. Um, as previously reported, the initial plan was to convert the court on our hard court, <coughs> one furthest from the Jubilee Centre, into a MUGA, which would be freely and independently accessible when the courts were not block booked. However, on further investigation and research, including site meetings with potential contractors, it became evident that we would probably need to extend the length of the hard court area and move two of the floodlit floodlight pillars. Mm -hmm. This was due to the need to maintain sufficient runoff area around the courts to continue to accommodate league netball. We therefore looked at other possibilities to accommodate the idea of freely accessible informal basketball and football facilities and explored the option of installing heavy duty ball walls in the lower overspill car park which is what um, the resident was referring to. The car park is frequently empty out of school hours and can be safely secured with the gates. Therefore, once the gate is secure, it could be used as an informal area for ball games and utilise the existing surface without the need for any additional floor markings. The proposal is therefore to install three ball walls, one at the far end and two further ones either side. Below is an illustration of one of the possible <coughs> options with indicative costs. So this isn't what we're proposing, but this is just, we've come back with a proposal for councils to discuss. In respect of the leisure equipment for the Jubilee Green, um, a wide raft of equipment and surface area surfaces are now available. So research is currently being undertaken looking at various options with a report to be taken to either leisure, youth and amenities or full council for discussion decision by councillors. Yeah. So this isn't what we would necessarily want, but this is an idea for councillors to, to look at. Yes. And there is uh, nominal code 3022 has a £5,000 uh, budget held for towards the cost of the multi-use games yeah. era. Yeah, yeah. In the, so yeah. that is in the resource and budget. But I'd like to actually take points from Councillor Michael because 
you mentioned regarding the tall fence that mm -hmm. can protect. So it would be a good idea if you can actually incorporate that in that plan. Well, we thought we have we have sought a lot of information. It's the, it's the fact that there is significant cost in extending the hard court facility, which is there at the moment. This is a much cheaper option. So that's that's the background to the difference between a mover and just putting these in. Anybody who wants to click on any questions? Can we go on then? Well, we need to, we need officers really need guidance as to what councillors want us to do now. What 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 area do we pursue? This is actually in a budget of five thousand. There is five thousand pounds, yeah. Held in reserve. It can if you if you that's what you're I think we can yeah, discuss why. that right now. Okay then. So I'll take it off full agenda, full council agenda and add it on to the Leisure Youth and Amenities Committee. Yeah. And then it's full of And Roger out there. And then yeah, so it'll have to be it would have to be Leisure Youth and Amenities and Finance as well. Okay. So, okay, all in all in favour? Leisure Youth and Amenities. Oh yeah, it's uh, yeah, I think it's a minute, so See, that was John Ash from the second device for me. So, um, to discuss this one, so cost to leisure youth and amenities and finance committees to determine. So, are you ready to vote? To because yeah. I don't want okay. the yeah. councillors to vote. Okay? It's all in favour? Yeah. Unanimous. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, I will move on to 18.3, traffic speeds and poor visibility on Bradley Stoke Way, Websuit and Bailey's Court Roundabouts, SGC Highways Investigation Scheme, Request Update. Yes. Right, um, yeah. so we submitted the uh, Highways Investigation Scheme request form to South Gloss and the response that we had back with Thank you for submitting these details. The proposals will be assessed and scored by the Assess and Decide team shortly in order that the proposals may be considered for possible investigation as part of South Gloucestershire Council's 2021 capital programme. Is that the pedestrian walkway we were talking about? Is that the traffic visibility? Yes, on that. On right. I thought it's a totally different thing when they came to this. Okay, can we actually move on? 18.4. Woodlands Lane, Bradley Stoke Way, Traffic Light Junction, SGC Highways Investigation Scheme Request Update. Right, that? again, we've submitted a Highways Investigation Scheme request form mm. and the response I've had back says, thank you for sending in the scheme request form for the above, this one's slightly different, no, this is slightly more detailed. For your information, an investigation scheme has already been added on to the local transport priority list, list of investigation schemes, so it's reached the next level up from the other one, because I guess somebody else must have submitted, whether it was a local council or a board yeah, councillor or, oh, yeah. Yeah, and myself on the uh, forum. Great. To compete against other schemes already within that list. Schemes that are added to this list are scored annually against key transport criteria as set out in the joint local transport plan. The council receives so many regular requests for highway improvements that a clear process is necessary in order to be able to assess, evaluate and compare these requests so that every suggestion is measured in the same way. This creates a level playing field in that the scoring system itself is identified for every proposal and that the proposals that most closely contribute, contribute towards Council's key transport objectives come forward for funding first. The prioritisation process currently used by Council was agreed by Councillors in January 2013. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's been... So, well, I will go to the next one, which is, um, I've, been, I've been racing this point for some time. 18.5, lack of bus pull in bays on Bradley Stoke Way, South Coast Council response update, Sharon. Yeah, um, we emailed them again on the 15th of March, 
um, saying that the lack of bus pulling bays along Bradley Stoke Way was leading to significant traffic hold-ups and yeah. queues which have a knock-on effect to surrounding roads and roundabouts yeah. when any bus is waiting at bus stop traffic. At bus stop, all vehicles are held up by the bus at the stop, which often leads to vehicles carrying out potentially dangerous manoeuvres trying yeah. to overtake the stop bus. Yeah. Owing to the large number of buses, Metrobus T1 service and the 73 service that use Bradley Stoke Way and stop at the various stops along the length of the road, yeah. it's often the case that buses are holding up other buses, which will obviously have a knock-on effect on all bus timetables. Councillors are aware that there are a significant number of comments from residents in local social media regarding this problem. Councillors would urge South Bus Council to carry out a traffic survey to look at how the lack of bus pulling bays on Bradley Stoke Way impacts on buses and other traffic that use the road. The response from South Bus is, thank you for your email dated the 15th of March in the above connection. As stated in the response made on the 7th of August, this was last year, the use of lay-bys at bus stops often results in delays to bus services as once in the lay-by they are unable to pull back into the traffic flow. Yeah. Therefore, in order to encourage the use of public transport by improving the reliability of bus services, we need to ensure that buses are not delayed at bus stops. Having checked with the South Gloss Council's road safety team, there have been no reports of any road traffic incidents in relation to having two vehicles trying to overtake buses whilst at the bus stops. It is also the responsibility of the driver to ensure that they do not make any overtaking movements of buses or any other vehicle on the highway when it is not safe to do so. We have also not received any concerns from bus operators that bus services are being delayed due to other buses being stopped at the bus stop. Therefore, South Wales Council have no plans to consider changing the bus stop designs on Bradley Stoke Way. Thank you again for your inquiry. Oh my God. This is larger? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Do you want to say anything? Well, I think here South Gloss Council is waiting for an accident because we have given much more evidence right now with the, in the media it was. I actually, I raised a concern. And when it's actually keeping a blind eye to see there should be an accident to, actually to them to really respond, that's really appalling. Yes, by that logic, the... Um, sorry. Right, and... Uh, that logic um, it's too dangerous to have a pull-in because of the fact that they can't pull back out again. Yeah. In that case, there wouldn't be any pull-in. Pull. There wouldn't be any lay-bys. Yeah, that is, that, that, that's totally logical and, uh, yeah, yes. Yeah, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I always wait for the bus to pull out, always. You know, I don't have a problem with it. It's bigger than me. Goody two-shoes. Um, from the people of Bradley Stoke, Lipstoke, everyone in this area. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, the people have spoken, but the council yeah. have a different view. Yeah. They want yeah. to grind uh, the whole uh, road have system. Have you heard of Brexit? <laughs> That's out of the Brexit, yes. yes. I, I want to, uh, uh, to a halt. Yeah, we, we will respond back because there is an evident evidence right now we need to write. As well as I urge the two district councillors also to actually press on this because it's a an issue. No, I disagree. Is it? Oh, okay. Well, well, I, I do agree, actually. I think that I we, should have, uh, we should have full in, but the chances of getting them there are non existent because the policy was to speed the metro bus as fast as it can go, and therefore any uh, hold ups to the metro bus bad. Never mind the drivers, you know. No. Sure the idea yeah. is to yeah. well, yeah. 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 the car is the car is the the and effectively, and I couldn't actually see, help see the evidence, um, which is actually before my eyes on the front of the journal, um, if one bus is taking another bus at the yes. bus stop, 
and vehicles coming through. That's so right. I think we should actually send that uh, photograph that uh, was deployed by somebody to Stephen, I assume, or Stephen Turk. I'm not sure, but I think we should submit that back. <coughs> so here is the evidence in front of you. This is what's occurring. They actually, they actually said that what they said was there's no reports of any road traffic incidents in relation to vehicles. Yeah, but they said also that they yeah. fixed the national. No, no. 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 Steve, excuse me, Steve, will you be able to supply that picture? You know, so that. Um, I think we need to write because it's a race by to many residents in town you know, mentioning because we have the space. Thing is, if there was no space and it was actually like a congested area, we don't have right now in Bradley we have the space. And also, the metro bus when it started, it should have been a there should have been a bus lane there. But what we haven't had the bus lane because they want to put the bridge over there. They want don't want to, <coughs> so that's been. But still, we can have that uh, bus bay. Otherwise, mm -hmm. any other suggestions? Anybody else? Yes. I agree with John, because if you have a lane for the buses to go in, cars do not automatically stop to let the buses out, and it take up to five minutes. Unless it's boring. It's coming from Aztec West from where I've seen the PM1 and the PM1 go into the lane by opposite Aldi. And cars just keep going past, and it's got this light flashing to come out, nothing stops to let them out. They would, have, they would have to do a consultation, watch the traffic at peak times, to see what the problem actually is. You've got no chance of getting South Cross to spend more money no. after you've got all these fantastic bus stops. No problem with the we, we should have done. The, we, we should have done that. This was an urge. The, the, the thing is, it should, we should have we should have done this from the start. Just because just because that's been done, that means oh we have to suffer. That's not a thing, good thing. We need to actually. Yes. Yes. People are using T1. Yes, yes. It's Nick. been quite confusing for some of the residents driving as well because um, a couple of people I know, they've tried to let the bus go. So they've like pulled in a bit behind the bus. The cameras have taken a picture and fined them for going into the bus lane. So for some reason, that whole area um, is a bit confusing. Which one? The, um, you're talking about the Aldi. Yeah, with the new metro. Yeah. Um, they got the metro like the yeah. Yeah, so She's quite to... right. I, I actually inadvertently went in there thinking yeah. I could have gone down there and it was too late. Mm. Yeah, and so there's, there's a sign post thing to say it's clearly a bus lane okay. and there is a camera there. But this is um, uh, Nikki. This is not related. Uh, but this, you know, we need to actually stick to the uh, point because this is actually regarding Bradley Stoke Way. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm referring to Bradley. No, yeah, we're talking about down by Tesco's and yeah, and the leisure uh, centre. That Let's way, down there, down towards Webster's Roundabout. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm referring to. But there's no bus lane there. The oh, bus lane's up at the top, isn't it? Yeah, it's by yeah. Aldi. Aldi up to no, we're talking no, about this, from this there, yeah. up down. Okay. Okay, we, we need to... Can we actually do anything on this one? So we need to write back to South Gloss, emphasizing the point and send the photo of the bus is overtaken. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, and also say that there was a concern raised by councillors that whether we are waiting for our next accident or next year. But there was actually like, you know, enough and more people raising the concerns. Did you want to draft the letter? We can. And I'll send it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So we will go to the next one. 19. <laughs> To receive the minutes of the main finance committee held 17th April 2019 and to deal with any matters referred to the council not covered elsewhere on the agenda. Just to receive. Just to receive, yeah. Yes, received. And the next one, the 20 to receive the minutes of the planning and committee on the 27th 2019 and 24th April 2019. Yeah, that's also received. And 21. 
It's to receive minutes of the Leisure Youth and Amenities Committee held on the 15th of April, 2019. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Right now, this is a miscellaneous matters. 22.1, Electoral Votes and Boundaries for BSTC Election 2023. So we have... Yes, bad place. And so I have to speak on the agenda. Do you want to say on the mic? Give me another one. Try to keep it. Try to keep this brief. Um, so I asked this to go on the agenda because uh, towards the end of last, uh, mid, the, middle of the calendar year last last year, um, South Gloss came to us and explained the ward bound changes for the district council, and then also reiterated how that had um, then dribbled down into the parish ward reconfiguration. So we have larger wards this this time round. So um, as part of that discussion with South Gloss at the time, they said if we wanted to revert back to the previous ward arrangements we had in uh, Bradley Soak, that is possible, but we had to do that after the election and submit a request to them. So this is just me purely as, I was in that meeting then as chair of council and on part of their, you know, when they were coming in to talk about some governance and everything. So just following on from that, it's basically just to put to council, if there is support there for going back to South Gloucestershire Council and trying to engage and see what's possible, do councillors wish to do that or not to do that? Um, and that's basically to try and return to the smaller ward arrangement we had, so you don't have seven councillors standing in one ward and massive ballot papers for residents and people trying to really understand who is locally representing them. So it's just really trying to canvas the opinion of council whether they wish to go ahead with that. Yeah, John, then, yeah. Um, I agree with Ben, actually. If you're presented with a ballot paper and you have got a choice of say nine or seven, I think it's very confusing, especially as people used to just put in one cross, you know, let alone all those. And I'm not saying we go down to what used to be in the woods, not necessarily, but I think perhaps instead of having Bradley Stoke North, Bradley Stoke South, and my ward Stoke Wood, perhaps Bradley Stoke North would be put in two, and Bradley Stoke South would be put in two. So at least they got say a maximum of three or four people to vote for. So you don't get the confusion. I don't think I can't see there's any benefit to any political party which way it's done. I just think it just avoids confusion and perhaps the when we got all the chairs sorted out of uh, the committees, perhaps the chairs of the committees could meet the South Gloss representative for an informal discussion, and then we could then come back here or perhaps. Bear in mind, we got to 2023. 20, we could then put it to just strategic planning. I don't know if that might be relevant, would it? Not, not particularly. Mm, uh, not I think, think it could be done. I think it could be, think it could be discussed and done by. Yeah, I think, I think we need some discussion because I think it's too many people and it does get confusing. The other way we had, we had, we had a one seat ward, didn't we? What the central by the said, what was that? That for? was my ward, oh, yeah, Manor Farm. Manor Farm, Manor Farm. Manor Farm yeah. which was just one seat. And I think that, that is that. Well, it's yeah. not that, but it, everything needs to be evened out with it. I think it's... Yeah. I think until, sorry, yes. in answer to your question, until we get the uh, cost of the election, we won't know whether there's cost implications. Because, because uh, one, one time I raised the point, yeah. which, um, yeah, because I was also a bit not very happy with the big awards and to, because there's seven people in it. And if all parties are putting in seven candidates, you see how many candidates will be long list, the ballot people will be like. So it was huge, okay, that's one point. And what they said, because of the new, uh, the cost to the town council, the parish, they're going to charge us, you know, for the election, the South yeah. Council. Mm -hmm. It will be less. Otherwise, they need to actually, the, because of the restricted awards and other things, it'll be much slightly more. So that's the reason. Well, the cost but let's see. Yeah. Cost then yeah. Two points very quickly, Chairman. Firstly, I think the proof of the pudding is in the eating, because Bradley Stoke, beginning with B, was one of the first uh, wards of actually to count us. And I think we were almost the last to finish, we were there virtually all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah which is us. quite ridiculous. <laughs> the second point is, in Northampton, we recently had the Boundary Commission in, they said as far as possible, they should go to single member wards, but certainly no more than three members per ward. And the great majority of wards there are there now either one or two members. Okay. Yes, right. Well, I originally agreed with Ben and yeah. John, but uh, I've sort of changed my mind, actually. I think, I'm not drunk, so I'm 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 dr
Tully is going to be district. This area is. No, the, the parishes were too difficult to get off. You know, you didn't have one slot to the other with the gun. Um, okay, there was 15 names on the sheets. sheets. But people said the money, you know, they seem to go down like this, all right. Um, they certainly did in our bit. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I can't see what was wrong with that, actually. Uh, I don't know, it did not cheap. That cheaper was the one of the options they said, but you know, anybody have any other suggestions? Do you want to say anything? The cost. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was trying to take Yeah, the link, please. Yeah. I'd like to see if we go back to where it was before, where you have the, the different wars within North and South. Because, like what John said, you find it all, you sort of separate it. Because then you, got, you go to one polling station, you've only got about three or four names on it. Whereas at this last one, again, it was huge. But I would like to see, like, Meadowbrook. Um, Manor Farm, uh, Primrose, I think that defines everything on the show to separate everything. Yes, but I just want to propose that we can sort of second go to choose to or not, that we just engage with other public services and investigate what it is and is not possible. But I think we need a bigger discussion right now as yeah, so we just, we just we just ask the question to the public service, we're not asking for a change, we're just asking what is and is not possible and that can be reported back to council for further discussion. Also the cost of the election. Yes, yeah. that's uh, uh, our old secretary. Would you want the chairs of the committees to speak to them? I think when we get the, when we get the figure. Yeah. 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 Ye
Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, I think it's going to close the meeting. Thank you all. Sorry for the delay, but I hope to make it